The Hario V60 has been my daily driver for ages. And while I've changed up the recipe many times while using this brewer at home and in cafes, over the last year, I've landed on one recipe that has really stayed with me. It's worked for just about any coffee from light roasted single origins to more developed blends. And it relies on understanding and manipulating a few key variables that really move the needle for me. First, we'll build up the recipe, starting with a few basics. Now, I'm always going to start out with 24 grams of coffee and 400 grams of water for a 1 to 16 ratio. I'm aiming for a grind setting that is as fine as I can go without clogging the filter. And I found that a pretty generous range of 3 to 4 minutes for my total brew time works with most coffees. Within those parameters, manipulating agitation, how much I pour at a time and how fast I pour, allows me to make adjustments on the fly without bothering too much with grind or ratio which in the past would have been my primary methods for adjusting a recipe. And there's one in particular adjustment that I lean on heavily, especially when I'm switching around coffees. But first, let's take a look at how I split up the 400 grams of water. This is where I use the agitation from the 4-6 method, which I'll describe briefly, but I'll also link down below in case you're not familiar with it. I split the 400 grams into two sections, the first 150 grams and the last 250 grams, roughly 40% and then 60%. I then split those two sections up again into two roughly equal sized pours. Now Tetsu's 4-6 method describes how manipulating these pours can affect the brew. I find that manipulating the first two pours makes the largest difference for me. As I mentioned in my single cup video, which is also linked down below, it's really a game changer. What I'm aiming for is enough water to create a loose slurry that swirls easily. And I find that this adjustment is really dependent on the coffee, be it the roast, elevation, density, or just the amount of CO2 that's present. Usually the amount of water for the first pour is somewhere between three times to four times the weight of the coffee. Sometimes that's 75 grams, sometimes it's 95 grams, sometimes 120 grams. But it's extremely important to make sure the bed is evenly saturated and settled to prevent channels from forming, which can result in a fast drawdown and an overall cup that is weak and slightly sour. So my routine for dialing in is as follows. I'll lock in the size of the first two pours first, and then make adjustments to the grind if needed. And if that still doesn't move the needle into good flavor territory, then I'll consider bumping the dose either up or down a gram. Getting the first two pours right ensures that there's no channeling, and then the grind adjustment will get me into that three minute to four minute range. And on occasion for some very light coffees, a 23 gram dose will work better. And for some more developed coffees, a 25 gram dose may work better. But let's go ahead and brew some coffee. All right, so I'm starting with a small divot to help fully saturate the coffee. I'll then pour in slow circles, gradually knocking down the outer wall of that divot. I'll pour until I can see that everything has been saturated, which in this case took about 95 grams. I'll then swirl the bed of coffee to help even things out. A fully saturated bed should be loose enough to move like this. After 30 to 40 seconds, I'll start my second pour up to 150 grams, allowing the stream of water to break up a bit. I find that this helps release more gases without disturbing the coffee bed too much. I'll then swirl the bed very gently to make sure that everything is nice and settled again. This is optional, so if you're finding that your coffee is tasting a bit muddled or is taking too long to draw down, then feel free to skip it. The third and fourth pour I like to keep equal size at 125 grams each. So these pours will land at 275 and 400 grams. Now, going back to Tetsu's method for a minute, he notes that manipulating this portion of the brew will impact strength, and the first portion will impact sweetness and acidity. I personally like to keep the later portion of the brew locked in, and only really adjust the first two pours if I feel like I need to. This achieves a nice balance of flavor for me and helps keep dialing in relatively simple. Because making sure that your coffee bed is free of channels before adjusting other variables like grind and dose will get you to delicious coffee so much faster. So let me know if you give this a try. I've had great cups from inexpensive Timo More hand grinders all the way up to a $2,700 Bentwood. And I'm curious about what kind of changes you usually make to your V60, or do you make any changes at all? I look forward to seeing you in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.